Got three really, oh God. <laughs> Got three really good no prep icebreaker activities. Uh, you, if you've watched the channel at all, you know that I would much rather replace the word icebreaker with connection before content, because ideally you warp each of these to connect to the purpose of your gathering. And that for me is the biggest distinction between an icebreaker and connection before content. <laughs> Let's get into it. First one, archival connections. Um, this is really fun. Everybody carries these computers around in their pockets, yet we rarely use them to connect with each other in person. Most people, in fact, I have met very few people who don't have a whole bunch of photos on their phone. And so what I want you to do is invite people to pull up their photos app. And on most phones, if you tap the top of the screen, it scrolls way back into your archive, pretty much as long as it's loaded. So right now I'm back in 2016. And the invite is for people to just scroll as far back as they can in their archive and choose a photo that they would like to share with somebody else. That prompt is really important. Um, so I did this, I have not actually prepared this and you, ooh, you're gonna get a little treat here. Um, this is the one that showed up. Obviously this was not me in 2016, uh, but I did take a picture of a picture of me, I don't know, eight or nine years old. I'm not even sure. Um, there you go. I would share the story. Actually, I was probably 12 uh, because I got certified to scuba dive when I was 12 years old and grew up scuba diving for lobster, ripping them out under from rocks uh, in Massachusetts. If I shared this picture with somebody at a meeting or event, it would be nearly impossible for them to forget that moment. Imagery like this is gonna be so uh, visual, they're gonna remember that, uh, that exact moment. They might not remember the fact that I was wearing a sick headband, but you got the idea. So archival connections, you're literally just inviting people to go back in their archive, choose a photo or an image, a video that they would like to share with somebody else, meet and have an exchange over that. The magic of this is it often uh, opens up, the point is not to talk about that photo for a long time, I open up many threads, right? You probably gauge that I really like scuba diving. You realize there's a boat, there's water around. Uh, I have this, I took a picture of a picture. There's all this additional context that you get from a single photo, right? A photo says a thousand words. And so the point is not to talk about that picture, but it's just a really unique, unexpected, often delightful pathway into some other cool conversation with somebody. By the way, this thing that I'm holding in my hands, I'm going to share a lovely little secret on how to get a group's attention back, especially if you've got a large group. Once you start people into connection, and if you've given a good enough prompt and you framed it well enough, it should actually be hard to bring people back because you framed it in a way that like, this is valuable, they're interested, they're bought in, they know that it's connect, how it's connected to the purpose. And so for the archival connections, as an example, um, I might even add, add to the prompt and say, choose an image that represents a part of who you are, or choose an image that represents something that is important to you. And then if I'm using that as the icebreaker, the connection before content, in that event, the next thing I'm gonna say after that exercise is our intention with starting with that exercise about what is important to you is the next two days are purely designed to get you into conversations that are important to you, right? You, you actually frame it into your purpose, your, uh, your intention. Second exercise, uh, all you need is a blank note card. Of, well, this isn't blank. This is just the only little piece of paper that I had. Blank three by five note card. And really simply, you're inviting people to flip on their curiosity switch. And I use that metaphor very intentionally because some people um, talk about curiosity like a muscle. It's something you have to strengthen to get better. I was like, actually, I think you can just invite a group to be curious. In fact, if I held this up and said, ask questions about this, you could come up with 10, maybe probably even 20 questions about this. Why is it green? How did it end up there? Why are you holding it upside down? Right, there's all curiosity. You can just turn it on and turn it off. The invite to make this a really personalized icebreaker is to invite the group to tap into what are they naturally genuinely curious to know about everybody else that's in the room. Take that, turn it into a sentence that ends in a question mark, write it on a card, and throughout your meeting or event, have people ask those questions. There are lots of ways that can happen. So taking this uh, question on a bit of a quest to ask repeat, 
One way is that all of those cards get put in a pile, and if you're an intact, uh, established team, one of those cards becomes your question of the day every weekly staff meeting or check-in. Another way, if you're at a, a conference, and summit, symposium, something else for a, a few days or a full day, the invite could be during every break or in-between moment, break out that note card and ask at least five people by the end of the day that same question, just to collect five different perspectives, five different stories, five different accounts on that same question. You can see the first two are based on this idea of asking powerful questions. I really like questions. They are uh, prompts that invite and access human intelligence and human connection. And so for me, one of the absolute best questions to invite people to share is this template question. So steal it and apply it to your own context. What is one of your favorite stories about, and in this blank, fill in the purpose of your gathering or fill in the topic of what you're talking about. And all of a sudden in the room, you have people connecting over stories which open up lots of threads but it all relates back and it all works toward warming people's brains up to why you're actually there, which is really magical. And if you go to wean.me slash ideas, you can get a whole bunch more of these questions to print out and use in your own context. As promised, I can't remember where I got this. Probably Mark Collard, because he's a brilliant chap, uh, founder of Playmio, this gigantic database of uh, interactive and collaborative uh, online group games and exercises, also wrote a book all about tons of exercises with no props. Anyhow, to get somebody's attention back or to get a whole group's attention back, one of the kind of more playful methods is you have an object in your hand and you instruct the group, when I throw this object up in the air, anytime throughout the next two days that I, you see me throw this object up in the air, you can make as much noise as possible. Ready? We're gonna test it out. You throw it up and you can throw it up higher when you're not in a uh, studio with a giant light above you. And uh, what ends up happening is the energy in the room goes Woof! Everybody's noise gets everybody else's attention and then you can bring people back. You throw that a couple times um, and then perhaps once you have everybody's attention, you fake throw it and that gives people a little bit of a laugh. I exist on the planet to help make connection and engagement easy. And so these were uh, not rocket science exercises. They were really basic, but I've tried them many, many times with tens of thousands of people and they just work. And so uh, I would invite you to not be caught up in trying something particularly complex. Sometimes something really intentional is better than something really complicated to, when you're getting people to connect.